name is Stephanie Carroll and I am author of A White Room and today I am going to be doing a book review of The Complete Guide to Self-Publishing. It is by Marilyn Ross and Sue Collier. I'm reviewing the fifth edition and it's obviously a book about self-publishing. Um, I've been doing some research into self-publishing, considering it, no decisions made yet, but it's a really big venture to take on. It's basically starting your own business, and you can't do that without researching the crap out of it, basically. So I got a whole bunch of books from the library, and I got something like 20 books from the library. I ended up getting busy and only read like about five of them, or skipped you know, scan through about five of them. But this one was the one that seemed like it had the most valuable information to me. And it's it's obviously a very good book. It's in its fifth edition, uh, probably more by the time I do this vlog. It also has on the cover 100,000 copies sold. That's quite the accomplishment. So, it, and it is not self-published. It's Writer's Digest Books. It was probably originally self-published. <laughs> but what can you say once you sell 100,000 books? You're probably gonna get a bigger distributor. So it's a Writer's Digest Books, but uh, like I said, it has the most... I thought it had the most valuable information out of all the books that I had. Um, let me give you just kind of a brief overview of what the table of contents has. Um, the first, it's broken into one, two, three, four, five. It's, there's so much information in here. For one thing, the, uh, the table of contents is like five pages long. And it's broken into seven sections. The first section is all about just kind of a brief overview of your options. You have, you know, ways that you can self-publish. It goes into detail about the differences of traditional self-publishing and print-on-demand self-publishing. It seems to me a little bit biased against print-on-demand. It kind of says that it thinks print-on-demand is like a form of vanity in publishing. That I don't quite agree with. but. I wouldn't suggest this book as far as a POD researching book. But still it gives you some important information that even if you are doing POD publishing, you would want to read this because it's got stuff in here that you wouldn't think about if you were just going to go do POD. Um, it also talks about ebooks. A lot of people are just self-publishing with ebooks. They're not even doing the uh, physical book anymore. It goes into, they have a big, a big section about starting your book. A lot of uh, nonfiction books, you start, you know, trying to make sure you're doing it marketably wise, correct, before you can start writing. And then, of course, it goes into writing your book. A section on that. I, I never agree with self-publishing books that have a section on writing the book because... To me, it's like when you're ready to self when you're ready to self publish, you've written the book. But I guess for nonfiction, sometimes you look into how you're going to publish it before you write it, and that's probably smart. I just wouldn't that wouldn't be the order that I would go in. But I'm a fiction writer, so. Anyways, um, something that it does that I really like is that it really treats self publishing like a business. It talks about you know you coming up with your business plan. It tells you about all the things you have to do for registering your business, choosing a name for your business, getting the proper licenses and permits, taxes. It talks about all that stuff, which is something that, as an author, you don't really look at it that way at first, like a business, but it really is. And if you self-publish, you are, you are a business. You're going to have to file business taxes. You're going to have to get licenses, or, or you're going to be doing it illegally. So then after that, it talks about mastery, mastering operating procedures, another thing that I think is so valuable. You know, it, it talks about how to come up with a plan, how to do monthly expenses, bookkeeping, order fulfillment, monthly billings. 
Something else that I really liked about this was it gave you a realistic idea of all the work that you're going to be doing if you do traditional versus POD publishing. I was considering traditional publishing, I, and I still am. There's a lot of work into it, in it. There is a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, you have to, you're in charge of shipping, you're in charge of returns, you're in charge of storing, you're in charge of inventory, you're in charge of everything. And it's a lot to think about, and this book lays it out for you. Another thing that, the next one is important preparation activities. This talks about, you know, choosing a publication date your ISBN number, the Bookland EAN scanning symbol, uh, Library of Congress card number, cat cataloging and publication program, and some other issues. Then it goes into design. This was one of the areas of publishing that I was really looking for information for, and this, this gave it. And it was pretty easy to read, too. There was a couple times where I was like having a hard time, like this is so technical, but it was all in language that I could understand, um, and I was probably just getting overwhelmed with like, ah, there's a lot to do. Um, talks about designing the inside and outside typesetting, what you have to do to actually prepare the, the manuscript for the actual publishing. Um, affordable processes, and this is where it talks about, it gets into more about traditional print-on-demand, binding options, paper options. When I first thought about like choosing a paper, I like, choose a paper, get me the cheapest paper, but there's actually good reason for the type of paper that you choose. There's a good reason for the type of ink that you choose and good reasons for the type of binding you choose and you would never think about these things. These are things that, you know, season in the in the business people could only tell you. Next we get into okay, your book is out there. And it starts going into marketing, starting to do, you know, the marketing plan, marketing online, more promotional strategies, and turning book signings into stellar events. So it has a huge section on marketing. Then it has selling books the traditional way. So this is going through traditional distribution like uh, bookstores, wholesalers, libraries, and education, and other sales. And that I thought was a really great section because for someone like me specifically, I get all my books at the library, so my book has to be in the library. That, that is my, I will not consider myself, my book like, you know, official until it gets in the library system. I need that. And it tells you how to do that, even as a self-published author. And you have to know that if you if you self-publish, a lot of self-published people don't get their books in libraries. But you can. You just have to you have to do some extra stuff. You have to go above and beyond. Uh and it talks a little bit about what trade publishers do and how they get stuff out there targeting your audience advertising and a lot more things, tracking sales, more marketing. When I keep saying more marketing, it's marketing from like a different view. It's not repetitive, it's all new information. Uh, subsidiary rights, it goes into that. I didn't read that section, I have to admit. Not ready to read about subsidiary rights yet. I was just doing basic research. Uh, next part, we're only on part six here. Non-traditional venues for generating sales, social media, out-of-the-box opportunities, like certain retail outlets, catalogs, become a paid spokesperson. Then it goes into seminars, classes, trade shows, and other ways to multiply your profits. And finally, part seven is propelling your business through the stratosphere. And this is talking about, you know, more things to do to make sure you're getting out there. And it even talks about, because a lot of people when they self-publish, afterwards they decide to make their publishing, the company, because you can create your own company to self-publish with. And you have to if you do it traditionally. Then people start publishing other people under that. So you have the ability to grow into a small publisher and it talks to you a little bit about how you can do that. Then there are a lot of great appendi appendixes, 
I don't know if that's the right plural for appendices. And it gives you a timetable. Oh, I love the timetable. That was so helpful. Showing you like how long each of these little steps would take because you're reading all of it and you're going, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Like I can't even keep track of all that stuff in my brain. But the timetable lays it out for you. You know, this month this happens. This month you should be doing this. By this month you should be doing that. It's great. Then um, Appendix A is piloting your successful marketing plan. Appendix B is organizations and other information sources. Appendix C is Canadian resources. Appendix D, select book manufacturers. Appendix E, marketing contacts. Appendix F, other helpful information. Bibliography, a glossary, and an index. And yeah, so this book, uh, I found it very helpful. And I think anybody who is, you know, at the beginning of researching self-publishing and they kind of want to know the basics, what it's about, and all of it, not just little sections of it, this is the book right here. Thank you for watching. I post new vlogs every Friday, Saturday weekend kind of time. So come back for more.